There are multiple ways we can host application or use applications in cloud. We could have app running as IS workload, PaaS, or could be a SaaS application. It's far more effective for attackers to pursue vulnerabilities introduced at the app level by cloud platform customers, and we need to secure our applications. So let's check what are the primary areas that concern our applications. Well, the very first is how we are deploying or developing the application, the SDL, Software Development Lifecycle. The data which is involved, data security, and of course, identity and access management, authorization and authentication, and how those applications are getting accessed, and endpoint security. So these are the areas that we need to explore further in order to secure our applications with Azure capabilities. So let's start with the security development lifecycle. You can use the Microsoft Security Development Lifecycle SDL process during the application design stage to ensure that security concerns are incorporated in the software development lifecycle, which is again SDL. So don't get confused. We are focusing towards security in the development lifecycle of a software that is application we are referring to. Security and compliance issues are far easier to address when you are designing an application and you can mitigate many common errors that can lead to security flaws in the final product. Fixing issues early in the software development journey is also far less costly. A software project can use these typical sequence in SDL or secure development life cycle, which includes core security training, establish security requirements, create quality gates, bug bars, security and privacy risk management, then establish design requirements, analyze attack surface, threat modeling, use approved tools, deprecate unsafe function, static code analysis, dynamic analysis, testing, uh, attack surface review, incident response plan, final security review, release archive, and execute incident response plan. These are the steps which will help to secure development lifecycle. The SDL is as much a culture aspect as it is a process or set of tools. Building a culture where security is a primary focus and requirement of any application development can make great strides in evolving an organization capabilities around security. We have seen these kind of practices all around the world now. DevSecOps, DevOps, moving security to the left, securing the code, all those practices will, will fall under SDL. Now, after an application has been deployed, it's essential to continually evaluate its security posture. Determine how to mitigate any issues that are discovered and feed the knowledge back into the software development lifecycle. Continuous feedback for the continuous improvement. Ringing bell. DevOps, that's correct. The depth to which an organization performs this evolution, evaluation, not evolution, evaluation, testing, is a factor of the maturity level of the software development and operational teams, as well as the data privacy requirements. Software services that scan for security vulnerabilities are available to help automate this process and assess security concerns on a regular cadence. Such services offer these benefits without burdening teams with costly manual processes such as pen testing. 
and Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Remember Azure capabilities? Microsoft Defender for Cloud is a service that's now enabled by default for all Azure subscriptions. It's tightly integrated with Azure application level services such as App Gateway or WAF, Azure WAF. By analyzing logs from these services, Defender for Cloud can report on known vulnerabilities in real time. And of course, provide you recommendations. You can even configure Defender for Cloud to automatically execute playbooks in response to attacks. Automation comes in the picture here. Defender for Cloud has a, a free tier for protection features enabled for your subscription. You must enable the enhanced security features for advanced security and threat detection capabilities. A few of them we have seen in the last video. And it's time to explore the identity. <laughs> identity validation is becoming the first line of defense for applications. Restricting access to a web application by authenticating and authorizing sessions can drastically reduce the attack surface area. Azure Active Directory, like B2B or B2C, and the usual AD offer an effective way to offload the responsibility of identity and access to a fully managed service. Azure AD conditional access policies, privileged identity management, and identity protection controls further enhance your ability to prevent unauthorized access and audit changes. We did the deep dive on identity in the previous videos as well. All those uh, all those concepts still applicable here as well, because if you go basics, it's the same I am, but we are now talking context with the application. Earlier, it was the separate uh, identity pillar that we gotta secure. Same goes with the data. Customer data is the target for against uh, web applications remember with all that strategies what are we securing we are actually securing data and to secure the data you gotta know what is your data why you need to uh, secure it why this data is at risk you gotta classify your data you gotta apply policies and encryptions there are so many other compliance and regulatory requirements as well uh, that your organization adheres. For example, uh, your organization is storing sensitive data that falls under the HIPAA, Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, which contains requirements on how to handle and store patients' data. There are other industries which demand separate uh, mindset or encryption or different way of handling the data like PCI, payment card industry, or GDPR, general data protection regulation. So those things will also help you to protect data if, you have, if your application is falling under those kind of uh, regulatory requirements. But even if it is not falling there, you gotta still protect your data, encryption, right? For example, the organization should use TLS to encrypt data exchanged between the web app and the backend SQL databases. We talked encryption in detail in the previous protection of data through Azure capabilities video, the last one. Data is also encrypted at rest in SQL Server through TDE, transparent data encryption. Encryption at rest ensures that even if the movement is compromised, data is effectively useless to anyone without the correct decryption keys. To encrypt data stored in uh, anywhere, let's say Azure Blob Storage, you can use uh, client-side encryption to encrypt the data in memory before it's returned to the storage services. Similarly, there are various ways you can encrypt your data. Most of those are built in. Now, <clears throat> we're talking a lot about encrypting data. So of course, you gotta talk about key and securing them. Separating application secrets like connection strings or passwords and encryption keys from application that, that's used to 
access data is is important, is, is vital. Encryption keys and application secrets should never be stored in application code or configuration file. Instead, use a secure store such as Azure Key Vault. You can then limit access to this sensitive data to application identities. Remember we talked about managed identities? It works here perfectly. You can rotate keys on a regular basis to limit exposure if encryption keys are leaked. You can also choose to use your own encryption keys generated by on-premises hardware security modules, HSM. You can even mandate the Azure Key Vault instance or implemented in a single tenant, discrete HSMs. So applications are core productivity tools for employees. In modern workspace, adoption of cloud-based software as a service applications has created new challenges for IIT. Let's call it challenge for now because lack of visibility and control over applications, the way users interact with them and the data that is exposed through them creates security and compliance risks. Zero trust solutions for the application Pillar are about providing visibility and control over app usage, data and analytics that identify and combat cyber threats across cloud apps and services. Defender for Cloud Apps. Defender for Cloud App is a cloud access security broker, CASB, that operates on multiple clouds. Yes, it's agnostic. It provides rich visibility, control over data travel, and sophisticated analytics to identify and combat cyber threats across all your cloud services. Moving to the cloud increases flexibility for employees and IT teams. However, it also introduces new challenges and complexities for keeping your organization secure. To get to the full benefit of cloud apps and services, an IT team must find the right balance of supporting access while protecting critical data. This is where CASB, Cloud Access Security Broker, steps in to address the balance, adding safeguards to your organization's use of cloud services by enforcing your enterprise security policies. As the name suggests, CASB act as a gatekeeper to broker access in a real time between your enterprise users and cloud resources they use wherever your users are located regardless of the device they are using. CASB do this by discovering and providing visibility into shadow IT and app use, monitoring user activities for anomalous behaviors, controlling access to your resources, providing the ability to classify and prevent sensitive information leak, protecting against malicious actors, and assessing the compliance of cloud services. CASB address security gaps in organizations' use of cloud services by providing granular visibility into and control over user activities and sensitive data. CASB coverage scope applies broadly across SaaS, PaaS, and IS. So we started this video with IS, PaaS, and SaaS, and we completed with SaaS, PaaS, and IS. We are not going too much into it because lots of things has already been covered in separate videos previous to this one. Everything is combining together. We are securing the entire environment. And these are a few things that we should keep in mind when we talk about securing applications. Well, 